Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the 2023 not-for-profit case presentation sponsored by Cameco. Before starting today, the JDS West Organizing Committee would like to make a land acknowledgement. The University of Saskatchewan, Saskatoon campus, is located on Treaty 6 territory and the traditional homeland of the Métis. We pay our respect to the First Nations and Métis ancestors of this place and reaffirm our relationship with one another. We pledge ourselves to create a competition that celebrates the diverse cultures and history of this land. Thank you to our judges, Hilary Carlson, Susan Milburn, Caitlin Rollick, Jared Finglas, and Aubrey Ann La Liberté, QF Esconius. My name is Eric Turcotte, and I will be the academic moderator for this presentation. Competitors will have a maximum of 20 minutes to present. Immediately following the presentation, judges will have a total of five minutes to ask the presenters questions. Our academic timekeeper, John, will hold up timing cues throughout the presentation and the question period. Judges will indicate their intent to ask a question through raising their hand. I will call on them to ask their question. Once the question period has concluded, the delegates will be escorted to leave the room. No questions or comments will be permitted from the audience at any time. Please ensure that your cell phones are turned to silent and that there's no talking amongst yourselves or signaling to the competitors throughout the presentation. And I remind you to please hold your applause until the end of the question period. Competitors, you are free to begin your presentation. Hello, class. Please open your textbook to page 75 and read the passage to the left. Now, what did you learn? Did you learn how to make connections with those around you? Did you learn valuable practical life skills that will gain you employment for the future? And did you learn how to navigate conflict even in times of hardship? Now, I would be very impressed if you had done so. Your organization, The Shop, knows better than anyone else that the confines of the classroom are not the only learning opportunity for vulnerable youth. Good afternoon, my name is Skye and I'm here with my teammates Cameron and Selena and we are High Beam Consulting, here to illuminate your path forward. We are so excited to be able to support your organization in the opportunity to provide the shop a strategy to generate more fundraising as well as awareness going forward. We can clearly target key questions such as how can the shops really acquire new long-term sustainable sources of funding as well as how can the shop gain more visibility for their potential beneficiaries. In addition, we will address the question how can the shop scale impact to reach more youth. Our strategy of shifting into high gear takes a look at how you can fuel your engine through a corporate sponsorship package, how you can align your tires through a social media revamp, and how you can replace your windshield looking forward by looking at how to service shares with other organizations. This will lead to an overall impact of being able to increase youth in service by 185% by 2025 and a revenue increase of $125,000. Now, taking a look at where you are currently, we would clearly like to walk you through how supplementing vehicle sales through a long-term fundraising strategy will also lead into how to gain more public awareness and visibility and the overall goal will be to reach more youth that are at risk and vulnerable within the Toronto area. So now jumping into our stakeholder analysis, we clearly see that there are three main stakeholders that we would like to pay attention towards as they have great power as well as great interests. First one being youth. Youth has the wants and needs of being able to have the ability for a second chance as these are youth who are currently at a vulnerable state and want to be able to reinvent themselves. The implication for this is that they require mentorship connections and opportunities that, are, that may be inaccessible but that is where the shop steps in. The second stakeholder we'd like to look into is partners. The needs and wants of partners is for tax receipts and to help youth in a tangible way and the implication of this would be the need for transparency and a clear ask from the shop. The third and last stakeholder we would like to focus on is the referral agencies. The referral agencies have a need of youth success stories through 
upward social and economic mobility, and this provides us with the implication that they have a willing that they're willing to partner with organizations um, to provide resources at scale, such as the organization um, the shop. Diving into some analysis looking towards the funding streams, we can see that the shop has three main funding sources: grants, family foundations, as well as donors. However, in the post-pandemic world, grants are so hard to acquire. Every single nonprofit and charity is striving to get those grants, and that competition is so fierce. Family foundations donate to multiple organizations. The shop is not the one exclusive organization they donate to, so targeting them in the future is not the best route to go with because it will not result in a sustainable funding stream. And then for donors, we see that post-pandemic, Donations have dropped 12%. This is a huge amount, especially in Canada, for what's given to charities itself. This is why donors are not the, route, not the right route to go with this, uh, in this route. So thus, the shop must look for new sustainable funding streams to prevent that deficit from happening in 2024 and beyond. So where can we actually source other, or where can the shop actually source other funding streams from? So you looked at four key, uh, four key alternatives, online fundraising campaigns, influencer campaigns such as Twitch, peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, and corporate sponsors. Our criteria were the scalability of the option. We want this to be a scalable and wide-reaching uh, wide fundraising strategy for your organization. The volume of funds. The volume of funds are extremely important in order to ensure you have that three-month uh, cash reserve as well as the ability to prevent the deficit. And the capacity of the shop. We understand you're a small charity at this point in time. We don't want to overload your employees or yourself so that you're able to, to have this funding stream excel in the future. Because of this, we see that, that online fundraising campaigns don't meet the volume of funds, so they were not considered. Influencer campaigns such as Twitch are not scalable. Those are one-time campaigns that run forward, and typically the influencer is not willing to partner with you again, so it does not work. And peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, Peer-to-peer -peer fundraising is great for charities. However, with the awareness that the shop currently has at this point in time, it does not work. What we see with corporate sponsors is that you may not have the capacity currently to do this. However, going forward in our recommendation, we will outline how corporate sponsors are the best option for the shop to pursue with going forward. So the key takeaway from this is the shop must look to target corporations to scale funds for the future and ensure that long-term sustainability. Going to our second analysis, we see, we understand that you have provided us with multiple areas of interest in order to target the market. Um, we have split this into two groups, supporting the youth as well as reselling vehicles, as we understand the shop is a two-sided marketplace. <coughs> supporting youth has the referral agency where they're able to provide those that are um, vulnerable, and selling vehicles utilizes vehicle donors, partners, and buyers. Now we understand from this is that supporting youth actually already has enough um, support from the shop. There's currently actually a backlog with everyone who wants to participate within the youth and gain these opportunities. So there's actually an a need for increased capacity um, through vehicle donations in order to provide youth with these opportunities. So there's no need to focus on uh, the marketplace supporting the youth. The second we would like to look into is reselling vehicles. These vehicles are actually currently um, with COVID-19, these vehicles are actually used vehicles are seeing an up in prices. These prices are actually where car agencies are actually requesting and targeting those who they have previously sold their cars to in order to resell their cars back at a higher price. So we see from this is that there is actually a need to target those who are reselling their current cars um, to provide better value than those car agencies that are outreaching to the previous customers and requesting to purchase with a higher price. So now that we know that we need to target those who are reselling their vehicles, let's take a look at John. John is a 30-year-old who is currently he was currently looking to sell, the, sell his car as he, had pre, as he already has a second car in mind, as he is an actual car enthusiast who likes to repair cars in their own time. But with his current car, he is looking to sell his everyday use car to purchase a higher end car. He, John wants to provide and give back to the community, but there are two main pain points that stops him from being able to outreach to the shop. The first one being that he does not know 
all the options that are provided to him with reselling his car. He is unsure that there is even an, another option other than just reselling it to back to the car agency. The second is that he doesn't know how the shop gives back to the community. How exactly is a shop providing that value back to the youth is something that John must need to know. So with this, we see that the key takeaway is that the shop needs to market towards John's in order to obtain more used cars through digital marketing and to expand their reach. Now, taking a look at our third analysis point, we can clearly see that the shop really needs to consider wraparound services in order to provide the best care towards the youth that they're currently serving. What are the current uh, situations that is going on within the shop is that there are key strengths within the organization, such as that very automobody mechanic expertise that Mark currently has, as well as mentorship and connections with other youth within the program. Now, the referral agencies play a key part in this in being able to inflow new youth into the program. And so we can clearly see that the shop has a very strong foundation in being able to offer to other potential organizations as they have a very niche and clear expertise within their field. Next, let's take a look at a potential opportunity and what the shop may be missing in terms of the services that they really provide to vulnerable youth. There are clearly opportunities for other employment opportunities, as well as emotional and mental support, which those that are not in education, employment, or training, labeled NEAT, um, are clearly in need of at a higher rate than other youth. We can clearly see from here is that NEAT youth need more counseling, support, and education opportunities to be able to move forward with more wraparound services. Now, what is the overall goal of this is that how can the shop really go and look into more impact and being able to affect more youth in a broader way? The shop can really look at more robust wraparound services by taking a look at partnering with other organizations that have specialties in fields that are other than the shop specialties. And this ultimately shows that the shop should partner with other organizations to provide additional employment, emotional support to those in order to be able to have them continue their journey within their lifestyle. Now, let's dive into our recommendations. We first want to go over an overview of what we're going to present today. In Fueling Your Engine, we're going to go over what our corporate sponsorship package looks like and who you should target. In Aligning Your Tires, we're going to show you how you can revamp your social media in order to gain more awareness. And when replacing your windshield, we're going to have a partnership with YES, or YES, in order to have a service sharing uh, organization. So diving into fueling your uh, organization, fueling your engine, highlighting why corporate sponsors are a great way to go with is that $21 billion in Canada has been given to charities in the past four years. And corporations now more than ever are invested in, social, in corporate social responsibility, especially after the pandemic. This is a sustainable route of funding as these corporations are looking for chap tax receipts in order to be able to lower their current expenses and to be able to have this corporate social responsibility, which is so important in today's day and age. Now, what does our corporate sponsorship package actually look like? We have four tiers outlined in our corporate sponsorship package. A sedan, crossover, SUV, and luxury. Each with different types of uh, funding streams and with different target amounts. We can see that targeting luxury is one, and you're going to be targeting one SUV as well. Now, in terms of what these corporate sponsors would be getting is outlined below. So mentorship opportunities would be allowed, would be given to all of these organizations. We want them to ensure that they can come and facilitate with the youth and be able to share their knowledge. This would help the youth increase the amount of knowledge that they're getting from the shop and be a huge value add. In terms of website highlights, we want to ensure that the sponsors who are donating the most amounts are getting the most feature. These organizations could potentially become recurring donors in order to ensure that going forward, you have a sustainable amount of funding in order to thrive. We also want to highlight that naming rights on the bottom is specifically limited for the luxury class. These naming rights could be for certain parts of the auto body shop if it was to expand, or even for portions of programs that are offered to the youth to ensure that these corporate sponsors stay and are retained. Now, what are some corporations that you could actually target? We can see that corporations such as KPMG, TD Bank, Carstar, or any within the telecommunications industry are great corporations to target. Why? Because these corporations actually need the CSR more than ever. Within the accounting industry, there's been highlights of actual burnout and overworking of employees. Within the financial services industry, we can see that as well. Partnering with auto body shops makes sense because you're an auto body. Your whole service revolves around helping youth uh, 
repair caucus. And in terms of telecommunication companies, they've also had major scandals within the last few years, and would, this would be able to help their corporate social responsibility going forward. The overall impact of this recommendation is $125,000 in donations from these corporations. Now, diving into our implementation, we see that there's three stages, planning, action, as well as measuring. In the planning, you must notify your directors and develop the sponsorship package. In action, you have to prepare the website for your upgrades, as well as outreach to those sponsors. And in measuring, you're going to measure the ROI on this recommendation, and marketing will be doing this every year. So diving into our uh, implementation itself, the key task is that you'll be actually hiring and onboarding a sponsorship coordinator within the first three months. From there, you'll be locating your corporations uh, in the fourth month going forward continuously, along with your outreach. So this will be done on a simultaneous basis to ensure that you're continually reaching out to sponsors to have them available. And you will measure the ROI in the last year. We see that the coordinator will be hired by month two, and that you'll sign one luxury, one SUV, and three sedan corporations by month nine, with a total cost of $53,500. Now let's look into our second recommendation in order to align your tires. This would be to um, revamp your social media and be able to gain that awareness from people such as John. Now John is in need for more digital marketing as John is someone who is a millennial. Millennials are always on their phone, always looking for um, new entertainment as well as just enjoying their time when they're scrolling through their Instagram. These are, these are reasons why as to why we are mostly focus on the channels Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube that will funnel through and gain more traction for the, webs for the shop's website, as well as being able to utilize emails in order to forward more marketing tactics. Instagram and Facebook would be done through some social media posts, and YouTube is a new avenue that the shop will be implementing in order to gain that attraction from people who prefer video format, as well as those who enjoy more content that is based on car repairs. The key messaging when you're going forward with social media is that you're able to provide vulnerable youth with opportunity to gain valuable technical skills through donations, which cannot be done by reselling to car um, dealerships, as well as being able to gain that tax receipt. The content that will be mostly done by these channels would be some feature stories from the current volunteers, as well as being able to provide that basic mechanical support through YouTube videos. Now going to our, into our implementation, let's look at what exactly would this look like. For Instagram and Facebook, this would be mostly based on Canva, as Canva is a free, um, free illustration app that provides, that provides users the ability to um, illustrate as well as plan out long-term posts. The, these posts would have a clear and simple, straight to the point, post that would be able to truly highlight the effects and the impacts that the shop is currently providing vulnerable youth. The keywords that will be provided is reselling cars as well as providing that youth opportunity. YouTube videos would have similar titles such as that listed below as well as having intriguing um, thumbnails such as the one shown on the right with oil change being one of the basic man mechanical mechanical skills that many users want and with the use of being able to provide that and having that funnel and having those YouTube channels funnel down to the website, they'll be able to learn more about the shop as well as being able to gain more um, attraction and retention. So let's look into the three key steps, planning, action, and measuring. For planning, this would be to hire a marketing coordinator as well as being able to purchase that Canva subscription, collecting emails from current from current um, purchasers as well as for future ones in order to send out some weekly newsletters in order to, in order to <coughs> emphasize on what exactly is the impacts of the shop and how they are able to assist these vulnerable use. Action would be the filming as well as the editing and measuring would be done by Mark himself and this would be the collection of the number of car, a number of incoming cars that will be able to be used to repair and as, as well as sell. The implementation, with the implementation, we have the milestone of posting 20 Instagram posts by month eight, KPI of streamlining 20 cars by end of 2023 or roughly around July 2023, as well as cost being roughly $60,000.
Now diving into our third recommendation of how you can really replace your windshield and look forward, let's take a look at certain organizations that might potentially be a good fit for the shop to partner with in order to have those wraparound services for youth. Now we can clearly see that yes, Youth Employment Services is a Toronto-based nonprofit organization that serves tens of thousands of youth in Toronto. They not only provide counseling and employment training, but they also have skills training as well for wraparound services for those in Toronto and above. We can clearly see that certain offerings are very clear by the shop, as this is such a niche market that the shop is able to provide. And through the logistics of being able to cross-collaborate posts on social media, as well as sharing through websites and Instagram, there is a strong ability to have the youth from, yes, organization, and youth from the shop to be able to cross-collaborate and be able to have sharing within the partnerships of the organization themselves. The impact of this would be an increase of 200 youth a year by the year 2025. One of the clearest steps in terms of the planning step would be a proposal package towards the organization and an action that is clearly laid out is a partnership memorandum of understanding. The key milestone is one partner obtained by quarter one of 2025 and new partnerships can be attained with other organizations moving forward. Diving into our risks, we see that the most pressing risk here is that you're unable to reach that $125,000 in revenue itself. The impact of this is high with the likelihood of this being medium. We see that your mitigation strategy for this is to focus on those larger donors in that luxury category. Diving into our roadmap for success, we can go a bit deeper into this into a Q&A session, but we want to highlight our financials today. So you see that your total revenue you will be receiving from this recommendation is $235,000 with an ROI of 31.1%, an amazing ROI for all the recommendations we are implementing today. Additionally, you'll have 200 youth served by June 2026, and you have those 30 cars acquired and served in order to be able to help your beneficiaries. So today we went over our recommendation of shifting into high gear. Now that class is over, I invite you to close your textbooks. Thank you. Absolutely. So I think there's a bit of a miscommunication um, in terms of this corporate sponsor package. So it'd be labeled as the amount that would be donated by these corporations. So $50,000 would be donated by corporations such as Rogers or TELUS. Uh, yeah. okay. 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 Absolutely. So we do have the wages uh, listed in the financials here. So the sponsorship coordinator, um, sorry, the sponsorship coordinator should be forty-five thousand um, dollars, and the sponsorship package would be seventy-five hundred dollars, and the marketing coordinator would be paid fifty thousand dollars. And how are you paying when you hire them at the beginning of the year? With information. Absolutely. So we see there is a bit of a surplus within the organization itself. So this would be used to supplement the wages going forward. And then as the donations come in, that would be used to pay the wages going forward. Um, sir, you're putting a lot of eggs in this corporate sponsorship basket. Um, and it, to me, it looks like there's a bit of a disconnect between the types of organizations you're targeting, some of them, and the um, job opportunities. So you mentioned KPMG, which is an accounting firm. How does that, or telecommunications, like how does that relate back to mentorship opportunities for these youth that are maybe not going to university and kind of getting those more hands-on technical trades skills? Absolutely. So we can clearly see that one of the things that we really want to encourage throughout this mentorship opportunity is the personal and human aspect of those working in their corporate jobs and those going through the shop's programming. So really diving into different personal details, um, and how their livelihoods showed up and how they were able to get to corporations such as KPMG, or Rogers, or TELS. So 
So this time would also be part of the mentorship pro or part of the um, corporate sponsorship package. And these corporate partners will be willing to provide those um, people that are interested in, uh, for example, car enthusiasts who may be interested in helping back the community, as well as actually in the car um, circle, in the car enthusiast circle, as well as wanting to be a part of not only the corp company, but also being able to assist with the CSR portions um, of their work. Um, just on this slide, you have that the difference between the luxury and the SUV is $30,000, which would basically put that as the cost of the naming rights. Um, is this an annual uh, agreement, or is this long-term once they, once they contribute, they now are the name on the on program? Um, so this would be an annual agreement. So we see that with these organizations themselves, they would donate one time or donate the, the amount over the annual span of the lifetime of their uh, partnership. And if they seek to renegotiate and repartner with the shop going forward, then that donation amount would be received again. Or if they choose a lower tier in the future, um, that would be acceptable as well. So diving into the second, it is is based on not having enough engagement on their social media platforms, which would have a low impact as well as a medium um, likelihood. The mitigation of this would be to increase the posting schedule as well as having those social media contests such as posting um, contests such as tag your friend um, in order to win a $10 gift card for this certain coffee shop place or for Amazon, for example. And this would be able to um, increase the engagement as well as being able to increase the awareness um, of the overall social media uh, accounts.